Hi all, I have a really sweet attacking game to show you now of Leela Chess against Laser. This is provided by David Grosvenor in a fast and furious time control, 40 moves per two minutes with a two second increment per move. So a real intuition test. The opening book given to both, e4, e6, and now the curious queen e2, which is a surprise weapon against the French. Uh, black played bishop e7 here, which is one of the main replies. Knight f3, and now knight f6. This is the end of the book. This is quite a provocative move, knight f6. Uh, d5 has been seen before here, because the bishop has basically unpinned, meaning that black could take with the e-pawn now on e takes. So this makes d5 better. Bishop e7, that's the whole point here, usually to play d5. And for example, d3, this position looks like a, a king's engine attack transposition, which seems fine. For both sides it's uh roughly even chances so but in this game we have the provocative knight f6 e5 knight e5 d4 black castles c4 knight b6 and now h4 very direct by leela so caveman leela is coming out here and black counterattacks that center and instead of trying to defend or add further defense to this, we have the attacking move knight g5. So setting up a fishing pole. Is Leela trolling laser already with this play? Okay, you might wonder what about knight takes? This wasn't played. Queen d3 hits d4 and h7. And that presents a huge problem because if knight, sorry, if bishop takes first, then say knights have five here then there's g4 and why it's going to be winning a piece here with a big <coughs> advantage so whatever way that's uh played actually and if bishop takes sorry if knight f5 immediately again g4 just winning a piece and that's big advantage so that can't really happen uh so knight g5 the d pawn is immune we have d6 being played Queen e4, just very direct, threatening a mate in one. That's parried, g6. But it does mean that white can now potentially activate this rook uh, here on this h file with the move h5 at some point to peel open, use that as a, a, peel, a, a peeling mechanism. We have bishop e3. And now a tactic here, knight takes c4 from black. An alternative d5 is also possibly one of the better moves in the position. And why it shouldn't, uh, should tread carefully here. Basically, c takes, e takes. Say queen f4, knight b4. There's a line here which uh, at most is probably just equality here. Very, very sharp tactical line. You might want to check the pin comment of this video. But it seems as though white has dynamic equality potentially but nothing more uh, to speak of it's it's very tricky position for both sides uh, so that was a viable alternative to play d5 and in this line just to explore that a little bit again here one of the ideas for example f6 here there's actually knight takes h7 and for example f takes queen h6 this uh, should be Again, a kind of dynamically balanced position where it could at least get a perpetual check there. So d5 has a lot going for it, but in this game, knight takes c4, bishop takes d5. So that's the tactical trick, which basically gets new frontal pressure, which didn't exist before in the position by getting rid of that d pawn tactically. More frontal pressure and pressure generally against d4. Queen f4, d takes, knight c3, knight b4. So threatening either positionally knight d5 or knight c2 tactically. And also, of course, tactically knight d3, pardon me, with the check to win uh, the queen. This is parried as priority, rook d1. Uh, if king f1, then knight d5 here is uh, actually, this, this should be OK anyway. This kind of continuation looks as though white's OK. Uh, so rook d1 uh, was played though instead of king f1 we have c5 
Yeah, it's, you might think, well, what about winning the exchange at least with Knight D3 check? Let's have a look at Knight D3 check. White would take and then take on H7. So opening up the H file. Now here, if taking Knight E4 is really strong, not be careful in this position if you're an attacking player. Not H5. Uh, let's have a look. H5. There's just G5 closing up the position with a big advantage for black. So you have to be really careful here. So Knight E4 and then Queen H6. And then this position is really crushing. It has to be played correctly with white to reap the benefits. Uh, so Knight D3 check is actually too dangerous. Yeah, because this Knight takes H7 here. And you might be wondering, what about F6? Queen H6 here is good. This position is fairly crushing. Yep, this is carnage here after h6 now. Knight takes its absolute carnage. Massively better for white. So c5 was played, ignoring this knight d3. So the fight against d4 carries on. We have knight c e4. C takes d4 was played. On knight d5 here, this has to be factored in all the time, this kind of positional move with tempo. There's actually queen h2, curious thing. For example, this position uh, should be okay. Yeah, white is actually building up a very impressive attacking position. Nimzovic would be proud of the distant overprotection from h2 of the queen. And in, in, when someone was mocking Nimzovic, Nimzovic with the immortal, immortal uh, overprotection game, there was a queen on h2. In this relation, it's actually <laughs> like the top engine choice. Because of the knight f6, yeah, black's king is in big trouble. The queen on h2 is not just overprotecting e5, it's threatening to come in now for queen h6. So black would have to give up the queen, which is not good news. So knight c4, c takes d4 is played. But now knight takes h7. So Lena is, is happy with her rooks. This rook's doing a good job. And this rook's definitely doing a good job waiting to sort of pounce in many of the variations. Uh, we have, you know, if white played bishop takes d4 here, then knight d5 is tame. It's an even position. But this keeps the fire going. King takes h7 here. On knight d5 instead, Again, let's question this. Then queen h6. So f5, this is just uh, absolutely devastating after rook h3. That's another perk of this rook. Still, you know, it hasn't castled this rook's ready for rook h3. And this position is just devastation. If we look at this line, for example, this is an illustration. Or here, instead of knight d5, f5. Then taking, yeah, this is just absolutely brilliant after f takes here. This is brilliant news for white. White's got a big advantage there. So king takes h7. We have check and now knight g5. Yes, simply crude attacking, beautiful play though. Crude and effective. Knight c2 check, king of one. Bishop takes g5, h takes g. It's the, the attacking dreams of many attacking players to just play like this. <laughs> I try and play like this in my bullet chess. So yes, the H file is just winning. This is a quick win. Knight takes E3 check and now Queen F6 check. That's not a good sign leaving the Queen <laughs> to be taken by two different pawns. G takes, D takes, Queen G7 checkmate. A crude, pardon me, a crude, brutal, crushing attacking game. If you've enjoyed the game as much as me, uh, please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly there. And you can become a member of chesspod.net, which is my site. And uh, yeah, there's recently good enhancements on the analysis board with arrows. You can do exactly the same arrows as this video and highlights. And uh, you can also check out the analysis on the improved menu learn from the masters. So lots of good stuff there if you want to check that out. Comments, questions, likes, shares, subscribes appreciated. Thanks very much.